I definitely haven't had a live guest in this brand new studio. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce my first guest in the new studio. Would you like to introduce yourself to the On Top listener? Hey, On Top listeners, what's the scene? My name is Kalpi, that's K-A-L-P-E-E. -E. Thank you so much for having me here, my bro. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming. It's very much, much a pleasure to actually have someone in the studio with me. I'm always on my own these days. I feel you, bro. So I'm here for three hours on my own every single week and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here now. Um, we're here, we're here. So let people know who you are and what it is that you do. So I'm an artist from an island called Trinidad and Tobago, in case you're not familiar. Um, and yeah, and I, and I have a genre of music called Chill Calypso. And yeah, I sing. <laughs> Just in case Chill you specify the artist, you know what I mean? Yeah. Chill Calypso. Chill Calypso. What is that? So it's a blend between... So, okay, I started off saying Calypso music right. while I was in Trinidad since like six years old, right? Mm -hmm. And Chill Calypso is a brand that I've been kind of, um, a genre that I've been experimenting with. So it's okay. Calypso, mm -hmm. reggae, pop, like a pop R&B vocal on top. I, I, that's what I usually sing. Okay. And then like I add in some rock elements and that kind of stuff, some dancehall elements in there. You yeah. Know? yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So your influence, you've got many different influences. Many different influences. Yeah. Okay. As a child growing up, you say Trinidad, right? Trinidad, yeah. As a child growing up in Trinidad, is there anything else that you can grow up? like deciding to, that you want to perform as a, as a musical artist other than Calypso really and truly um, you're not really going to be a rock artist in yeah. Trinidad I mean you're, you're definitely there like one or two artists who try it and the yeah. guys who still try it like yeah. I am one of those guys who would have tried to do something outside of Calypso and now Soka is the main thing so Soka music is the one yeah. that most people calling themselves artists are going to end up branching out and doing I even went true. into the Soka realm for yeah. a while and then you dip back out again and then yeah because it's just like the thing is, is I love my, I love carnival, I love my soca and everything, but it's yeah. just, it's just not my vibe. As in, as an artist, I could appreciate okay. it and everything, but I just have a different thing I want to express. I want to speak about different topics and, yeah. Actually, saying that, so a lot of people talk about calypso yeah. and they talk about soca. Now, a lot of people mistake the two. Right. What is the difference between soca and calypso? No, I'd say soca is a, is a, a more recent art form that branched out from calypso music. Sure. And the thing is. Soka music was supposed to be the blending of African and Indian roots in the islands, right? Right, and that's how that music came about. So it's it, it was a little bit quicker. The you know um, the melody there were more melodies in there, mm -hmm. but it's more the speed of it. You know what they spoke about changed as well. Growing up, oh, okay, you know right, I mean? yeah, like yeah, I was gonna get right, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, guys, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, but the difference is, I think the tempo one, the vibe mm -hmm. of it is just a little bit more trendy. Okay, yeah. And if you had the choice to be part of well, you, you were going to focus on any genre. You'd rather be Calypso yeah, rather than Soka. Calypso. Really? I think Soka's a little bit more fun. It, it, no, you're 100% right. It is more fun. Um, now, the thing is with Calypso, like, Calypso is the more political art form. So it spoke about some really serious yeah. things. Yeah. Which boring. Is, uh, boring, right? right? <laughs> it is boring, you're right. Um, and that's why I wanted to kind of make it fresh. Okay. Because, right. like, I, it was, it's been ingrained in me as a child, and I think all, a lot of people in Trinidad, mm -hmm. from the time you go to school, mm -hmm. Calypso competitions, really? carnival comp Yeah, it's ingrained. It's part of the culture big time. Uh -huh. So I didn't even have a choice to sing Calypso. Yeah. So I've been singing this political thing, political thing all the time, and I got to the age now where I'm like, you know what? I think I need to make this fresh again. Speak okay. about some important things, but make it cool to listen to. I hear you. you okay. Know? All right. So you've taken on the mantle of doing that. Yeah. Um, so you've been in the music it's a game since about six years old, you yeah, said, yeah. you first dipped your toes into it. What made you first decide you want to you know, get involved in music? Do you come from a musical family or um, is it just the, the, yeah. the environment that you're in? So, well, to be honest, it's the, I'd say more, uh, it's more of the environment because my family wasn't very musical or artsy, to be fair. Okay. But, um, um, I, as soon as I went to primary school, there was a nun who was a music teacher mm -hmm. at the primary school, right? Mm -hmm. And she, every, every child had to go through and like do the scales and everything. Right, and that's okay. where that started for me. She was like, you have a voice. Yeah. And that's where that started for me. And it never stopped all the way till now. Like I've always been involved in a choir or music festival, sure. classical, something. Okay. Yeah, bro. <laughs> can you, can you play any instruments? Yeah. I play the guitar, but I'm self-taught on the guitar. Okay. How did you self-teach yourself? Was it YouTube? Uh, 100% YouTube. Really? Oh, YouTube has been my... It's actually where they asked me that because I said that to somebody the other day. It's yeah. been my saving grace. I have learned so many crafts yeah. on YouTube. Production. Really? Video editing. Video, um, like, DOP movements, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, guitar. YouTube is just YouTube the most useful thing, yeah. tool going, isn't it? Bro, it's a thing. 
Okay, it's such all right. A tool. Interesting. So anyone out there, you know, if you can't afford the lessons, yeah, 100%. you know, just pay your internet bill and you're, yeah. you're sorted. Yeah. All right. So you've been making music for a long time now. You said your your, your parents aren't very artsy or into yeah. music. What yeah. do they do out of interest? Um, so my dad actually, he's part of the oil industry back in Trinidad. And, right? Oh, listen, oh, there's <laughs> money involved. Oh, listen, if you want money. <laughs> Oh, you know where to come. No, well, there's the thing about Trinidad. So Trinidad, apart from the rest of the islands, mm -hmm. is an oil-dependent country. So our main income yeah. is from oil and gas. Re I yeah. did not know that. Yep. And then carnival is our only really touristy thing. Yeah, so sure. if you look at Barbados, even yeah. Jamaica, all these yeah. other islands, they, yeah. they have a lot of different, like, especially Barbados, tourists involved sure. big yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So they're different sets up. Yeah. Trinidad is more oil and gas and everything yeah. else comes after. Yeah, okay. Which is trippy. I never knew yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. I associate oil and gas with obviously the Middle East and right, all the rest right, of it. Right, Didn't know that about yeah, Trinidad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so Trinidad is very much known for having like the best carnival in the right, world. Right. Maybe, maybe Brazil, but definitely Trinidad. Trinidad yeah. um, my 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 cousin always tells, tries to drag me along with him. Serious. Um, but Trinidad. When, so when it's time for I don't know how much a normal flight is to Trinidad, yeah. but when it's carnival time, yeah. eight thousand times the price. Like 100%. you can't afford it. It's mad. Um, have you been? To, I'm assuming you've been to um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trinidad Carnival. I, 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 went, I was in Carnival in Trinidad a couple of times, like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been to Notting Hill Carnival? Haven't. You haven't. Haven't. You know, you're not missing much. But okay, <laughs> I did. I, I, I wanted you to be able to compare the two. Right, right, right. Have you been to carnival any in yes. any other country? So I've been to carnival in Canada. So um, Toronto carnival. Okay. That's so and we have someone listening in Canada right okay, now, by see. the way. So I'm just letting you know. So before you say I anything to, rude, <laughs> just beware. Thanks they'll come for you. For You'll lose a fan immediately. <laughs> Girl, what's carnival like in Canada? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> of course it is. You know, the thing is, I mean. It is, I, I appreciate it because it's yeah. so cool to be able to go to another country, yeah. right? Um, especially places like Canada and stuff and hear yeah. island music, sure. hear people that yeah. I know that yeah. everybody else might know in the world, you know? Yeah. Um, so I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It is not the same because, mm -hmm. I mean, in Trinidad, that is the culture. So every sure. single person, or the majority of people there are going to be on the road, on the streets in the town in, in Port of Spain. Yeah. It's, it's so just music playing as loud as it can three o'clock in the morning till the next day till yeah. the next day yeah it's, a, it's something to experience it really is okay all these bands all the colors it's just mm. an energy brew you know so is it like is it so oh, oh, over here like i try and describe what carnival's like yeah. you've got like a it's, it's in notting hill obviously right. and you've got like um, a circle that's dedicated to the floats Okay. Um, with the bands and all the rest of it, people will dress up in their feathers and yeah. their costumes and all the rest of it. And then you've got like the odd road, well, the odd road. You've got many roads with the sound systems right. and people congregate in those sounds and they dance. Um, is that a similar thing in Trinidad? Yes. So same sort of thing. Similar thing. It's just that the entire road is catered for that. Right. So the um, they call them masqueraders, and it's like these massive bands. They're different kinds of bands, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's all a competition, by the way. They're all competing against each other. Oh, okay. Right? The designers and the pan bands and everything. Okay. And the road is just filled with thousands of these people, bro. If you get a drone shot of this thing, it's just people in the streets and trucks with massive speakers. Yeah. For hours and hours and hours and hours. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, your accent, yeah. you, um, obviously you've got a very strong accent. Right. Are you based here now or are you still over there? So, funny story with that. Um, I'm still very much, I still live in Trinidad, right? Yeah. Um, I went to school there till tertiary education and everything. Mm -hmm. But because of COVID, mm -hmm. I got stuck in the UK. Hilarious. Right? Yeah. Okay, right. So, so we flew from, where did we come from? LA? Right, we came from LA to here yeah. in the beginning of the year for a school tour in like Ireland, Scotland, okay. that stuff, yeah. right? Um, and then, yeah, as soon as that was over, all of a sudden new numbers start rising, yeah, all these things are yeah, happening. Yeah. And I got stuck here. So I've been here since February. Jeez. Trinidad borders are also closed, so we can't go back. Mad. So how have you? How have you? You're lucky though lucky. that you were stuck during the summer months. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. If you were stuck in January, oh. you'd be fuming <laughs> <laughs> with all your summer clothes. I know, right? Oh <laughs> your knees goodness. out in yeah, the winter. Yeah, yeah. You don't want that. Trust me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Again, <to that> <laughs> um. So how have you found London? Have you? Before I go, ask yeah. that question. Had you been to London before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my family actually, um, they moved here a couple of years ago. Okay. And um, while I was in university, they were here. My sisters were here. Yeah. And um, yeah. Okay. So I've been here quite a bit, yeah. Okay. What's the di main difference between London life yeah. and Trinidad life, would you say? Um, well, one big difference that I keep recognising is the fact that, one, you could just come out your house and walk around London, take a train there, that mm -hmm. stuff. Trinidad is a car country. Right. Which is kind of annoying sometimes because yeah. you want to walk. Walking is nice, you know, yeah. wherever. But then on top of that, when it comes to the music side of stuff, yeah. Trinidad doesn't really have 
an industry outside of carnival for music right which okay. is where things get hard for artists like me okay yeah, yeah. okay so i've i've never been to any um, caribbean country other than jamaica okay um so when it comes to like transport and all the rest of it there there, there are very different modes of transport like effectively you got the um the what they call them i can't remember but basically they're yeah. route route buses or whatever they right call right them. yeah 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 um and they'll have like a car um, to the route cars and you would be a normal car with yeah. about with the three seat in the back and the passenger seat on the yeah. front but they managed to fit, fit like 16 people in this car <laughs> is it the same in trinidad um not so much i think they've gotten it probably would have been that way yeah i've heard stories from my mom and them like that yeah but it's definitely gotten better with things like that same kind of setup like yeah. the bus route yeah where all the maxi taxis are and then they have the normal cars mm -hmm. and yeah Okay. But no train system, none of that no, kind of yeah, stuff. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want that's when the pollution starts. You yeah, don't want true, that stuff. True, true. You know? um, and it's nice to walk in Trinidad, I guess. It's not like walking around here with the grey skies and the concrete. You, know, you got <laughs> nice greenery, and and I imagine there's always music playing. Ah, it's not like, I mean, depends on where you go because this is the thing, right? Out of all the islands, yeah. I mean, I love my country so bad, but mm. like Trinidad looks more like Latin America to me. It's very different, right? right? So the beaches are far away. Right. It's not like Barbados. They can't be that far away. It's only a small country. About 45 minutes up hour. It's 45, and it's like it's 45 minutes from one side <laughs> to the other. Uh, so <laughs> walk is Everything small. is so spread around. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like they have this big sensor with nothing really. Yeah. And then one town is here, one town at the end there. Yeah. So it will take you some time. You know, the roads aren't always great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, yeah. Too, it's so spread out, yeah. which makes it tricky. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. All right. So you said you were over here on a school tour. Yeah. What was it that you were promoting and how did you come about the school tour and, and, yeah. and, and how was the school tour? Well, school tour was great, to be honest. Yeah. Shout out to any of those kids that are listening, but yeah. it was a motivational school tour, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened is while I was in Trinidad, um, which was a little bit before that, we were shooting some music videos for some music that I have out, right? Yeah. Um, and one song in particular called Paramin High, mm -hmm. which is a place called Paramin, is this mountain in Trinidad. Okay. While we were shooting a music video, yeah. the truck that we were using, right, on this mountain, it lost control and it started rolling backwards, right? Wow. And then this thing flipped over and landed on top of me, bro. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it crushed. It crushed me, broke all my rib, almost all my ribs, my spleen. I don't have a spleen anymore. All kind of things. Oh, happened. so what were you doing at the time? I was in the music video. So I wasn't driving. I was just okay. in the passenger seat. Yeah. And then it's this vintage old school van with no roof. Yeah. Right. And it's on this steep, steep hill. Yeah. Could ask her, literally on proper mountain. This thing just starts. He tries to turn it around because it stops at the top and it yeah. just starts rolling backwards. Yeah. And I'm just there in the back. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then he turns the wheel. Yeah. Just flips, flips. over and both of us fly out and then just lands on top of me and comes off. So after my recovery of that which was almost a, a, about a year ago a little more than a year ago yeah. right um i just kind of i was like you know what i want to be able to say the things i want to say and encourage the people who might want to be encouraged yeah and say it now don't wait until something might happen or you just don't know what will happen yeah. tomorrow at any point in time you you're not in control of those kind of things so live your best life you know yeah. be kind to people you know so i've got to ask this question sure when you were there when you flew out the top of this bus yeah and you were lying on the floor <laughs> And then you looked up and you saw this bus heading towards you. What was going through your mind at that point in time? Well, okay, so I didn't even get... The thing is, it happened so fast, yeah. I didn't even see that bus. Literally, like, when I knew... I knew things were going to go bad yeah. before it went bad, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm there and I'm just kind of trying to be content with myself. So I sure. told myself, I was like, okay, bro, you just had to trust the universe. This is your path. Mm. Literally, I told myself that mm. and I put a smile on my face yeah. and closed my eyes yeah. and then everything happened. And I just felt everything. I didn't see a thing. Yeah, I didn't want to see anything. Like, I was just like, you know what, whatever, dog. Boom. So everything else. <laughs> what, what did the doctors say? Did they say that, was, it, was there a chance that you might not survive? Yeah. So, like, um, go rush to the hospital. The thing is, uh, it's so far away that ambulances don't usually come up there, uh, right? Yeah. Luckily enough, there was a random ambulance coming from the opposite direction that uh, ended up picking me up. One wow. that we didn't call. So, we go to the hospital. And again, like, my, my lung had collapsed. Liv yeah. Liver was in half. Spleen shattered. I was bleeding internally. Mm. Yeah, bro. And um, yeah, it was like a 50-50% chance that yeah. youth was on my side. Basically, yeah. they would say, like, you're yeah. lucky you're young because, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if that bus crushed me, I'm gonna. You know? I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how are you now, like, health-wise? Doing so much better, bro. I'm good. I'm almost Lungs, back to ribs, muscles. spleen. Lungs good. Spleen's not there anymore, but we good. You what do you mean? Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait. What do you mean the spleen's not so there So that's anymore? gone. That was completely shattered. <gasps> I lost that spleen. Right. Um, apparently, you're supposed to be taking like antibiotics for that, yeah. but you don't really need it to live. 
uh, maybe you should just take them just in case. I should just take yeah, them in case. Maybe it might be an idea. Um, what about like, other like kidneys and stuff like that? Oh, that's good. We're all good on that. Yeah. But so I just like, I feel a little like the ribs, I feel like a little displacement still, but yeah. I could jump, I could run, I'm good. So if you were to play a game of football, I don't know if you call it football. Yeah, where you're fo- about, um, football, football, yeah. Yeah, if you play football, you'd be a fight to... I think so. Play yeah. a game of football. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Yeah, okay. I all think right. I'm back there now. Yeah, because I've been exercising and ther- physiotherapy and all that stuff. You know. Uh, yeah, well, I got Iron Man in the building. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's talk about your music. Sure, sure. So you got a project out at the moment? Yes. Well, I have a, a single off of that project. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the project first. All what right. is the name of the project? So the project that's going to be out on the second of October is called Feel Good Playlist Volume One. Oh, so it's not actually released oh, yet. Oh, so okay. You're talking about home. There's another project called Home that's out right now. Okay, but let's, yeah. go, let's go. So talk about that project that's out right now. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that project is out right now. It's a four-track EP. Mm-hmm. It's called Home, and it's mm-hmm. all inspired by my home, which is Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. So go check that out. You yeah. know, again, it's like that was an intro to Chill Calypso. So you'd sure. hear some. It's more of the experiments in phase, you know, where mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out, put, blending it a little bit, bringing more reggae into some. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's out now. You can check that out. And mm-hmm. then um, the one to come is called Feel Good Playlist Volume One. Okay. Okay. And what is that about? So that EP is something I've been working on for a while. Um, is it's what is it about? It's, it, it's different inspir- different bits of inspiration all over the place, um, but just bits of Trini culture. So the song that's out right now, which is called mm-hmm. "Gimme the Ting," mm-hmm. um, that song literally came about in LA. Mm-hmm. I was like to the producer, bro, could you give me the thing? Mm-hmm. That's what I said. Literally, that's all I said. That's so funny we get you know? stories <laughs> like that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so simple, bro. Could you give me the thing? Yeah. And that was it, bro. Like, the beat was going in the back. But you must have said a whole heap of things while you were in that studio. Why did that stand out? I don't out? know. I don't know. But they're, they're American. You could so have said, oh, I'm tired today. You know, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We've got a new song now. <laughs> called I'm tired today. Like, that's not going to work. You know, I don't know. I don't know why that stood out to him. But yeah. he was like, bro, give me the thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like yeah, that. And yeah. then he just started kind of doing something to it. And we had melodies on there. Mm-hmm. And it just ended up fitting. Okay. How do you end up working in LA as an artist from Trinidad? Right. So, I mean, well, big up to the management for that. Um, mm-hmm. Because Jeez, management and all management, that. Management, you know, extremely important. 50% of where nobody, nobody see the, you know, the backside of things. I thought you were going to say 50% of earnings. I was going to nah, say, nah, come nah, management. Nah. Cool, <laughs> all right. Expensive boy. <laughs> now, nah, but they do all the things that, the important things that, you know, people don't see in yeah. the background, you know. Facts. Um, but yeah, so we just went out there to shoot um, a music video, actually. Mm-hmm. And then while we were there, we met some people, you know, you should link up with this person. Thing about LA is everybody yeah. likes to link up. Yeah. That's okay. one thing about LA boy. Okay. Um, and yeah, we went over to, these, to the studio. It was a stylist actually who linked us with these guys called The Animals. Okay. And they would have worked with people like French Montana, The mm-hmm. Weeknd, they have some cuts with those guys. Mm-hmm. And we went in and that was the, this wasn't the first song we did, but we have, we have a good bit of music that's to come actually. Fair enough. Not, not, on, on, not on the new, not on the new so product. So, Gimme The Thing is the yeah. only one oh, on this then. one. And okay. then there's another one to come soon, soon okay. time, you know what I mean? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Before we go into um, Gimme The Thing, um, your name, where does it come from? So, um, my name, as in like what country? No, what, what does it mean? Is it meaning? Did you make it up? Is it, like, is it a middle name? Does it come from so family? Kalpi is my last name. Oh, yeah, so, it's my, so okay. Christian is actually my first name. Christian okay. Kalpi. Okay. And everybody in school would call me Kalpi. Nobody would call me my first name. Was there a reason for that? Well, people just... I went to a boys' school, yeah. right? Um, for my secondary school. And it's just like a thing. So yeah. everybody calls... Like my sisters, yeah. her friends called her Kalpi. Okay. Yeah, All right. Kalpi was the scene. Yeah. So um, I didn't... To be honest, bro, I didn't last, like that last name at first. And mm. then it ended, as a girl, I just ended up liking it. Like it just yeah. stuck. Yeah, it was okay. so easy. My yeah. first label was like, yeah, drop the Christian. It's too long. Oh, so when you first came out, were you... Were you Christian your Kalpi, name was Kalpi, Kalpi. Yeah. Kalpi. Okay, fine. Yeah, you know, yeah. and then I dropped it when I got signed. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah, been Kalpi ever since. Fair enough. Huh? That's yeah. your little story. All right, so this song, Give Me The Ting, yeah. it's got a special feature on it. Yes, yes, yes. Who's on the feature? So we got Steph London on this one, Jeez. you know, yeah. She heard the first version of it, which was called One More Night, uh-huh. actually. And she was like, yo, this song dope. She reached out mm-hmm. and we ended up getting a feature, yeah, bro. And it, she how, elevated it. How did she end up hearing this song? Um, I think it might be through. So we met some people, I, I'm guessing it might be part of her circle, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we know these people and yeah. they would have heard the music just from like following me in the past and whatnot and I'm guessing mm-hmm. through just association, you know, she must have came across the song or heard it and yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Cal Pete, thank you very much for joining me here lessons, in the studio. We're going to play the new, in fact, I'll let you introduce the okay, song. What's the scenes. song? All right, so Top FM, this one is called Gimme The Ting of the EP Feel The Playlist Volume 1 featuring Steph London, yeah man. Thank you. Blessings. Mm-hmm. 